Supreme Court to consider allegations of free speech violation by New York official in NRA case. So we have three different Supreme Court cases coming up right now. We have the Rahimi case, which is going to be heard at the time of this recording on November 7th today, which talks about do you lose your rights once you are accused of a crime, especially in relation to uh, your God-given right to keep and bear arms. Then you have the Cargill case going to be heard in March, April, in the spring, talking about, hey, what is the limit of federal overreach? And now you have NRA versus Volo. Volo which talks about your First Amendment right to association. All three are not about guns, yet all three are about guns. And it shows just how important. When people are like, oh, I mean, guns, blah, 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 when they try to, you know, shrug them off, how important they truly are. All right, let's get to this article. Any case that strikes at the heart of the First Amendment, the U.S. Supreme Court has agreed to hear the National Rifle Association's allegation against a former New York State uh, officer uh, official. The NRA asserts that their free speech rights were trampled by coercive tactics intended to dissuade companies from associating with the gun rights organization. The case, NRA versus Vulo, centers on Maria Vulo, the past superintendent of the New York State Department of Financial Service, after the tragic Parkland shooting, which it was, which remember... The Parkland shooting, the police, it, the um, the uh, law enforcement said he was on our radar. After that, Velo allegedly leveraged her position to warn banks and insurance companies against facilitating business for the NRA, branding such associations as a reputational risk, which is a violation of your right to association. The Second Circuit sided with Volo, prompting the NRA to seek a hearing at the nation's highest court. Eugene Volek, reporting on the day of the announcement, summarized the gravity of the question before the court. Does a government regulator have the right to intimidate businesses from engaging with controversial advocates due to either a personal vendetta or social backlash? The Supreme Court's decision to tackle this question could redefine the boundaries of free speech and government influence. Although the Second Circuit ruled in favor of Vulo, deeming her actions constitutional, probably politically motivated by that court, the NRA's petition raises red flags about the potential for state officials to ostracize political adversaries, kind of like what we're seeing with the T-Man right now as well, financially. If It argues that the Second Circuit's decision, if upheld, could dangerously empower officials to carry out politically motivated punitive campaigns against group from any sector. And this is the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going against guns right now, right? But it could go against uh, pro-choicers. It could go against environmental people. It could go against anybody. Once the government power is established and can be wielded by anyone, then everything is fair game. The implications of this case resonate with a similar issue in Murthy versus Missouri which examines the Biden regime's attempts to combat illegal misinformation spread via the social medias. This parallel suggests a broader examination of how government agencies interact with and possibly exert undue influence over private sector speech and affi uh, affiliations. The NRA's legal team has emphasized the severity of the allegations against Vulo. They accuse her of conducting clandestine threats, uh, exerting selective enforcement, and using public policy to manipulate the market against the NRA. I mean, if you think about it, you and I may not be huge fans of the NRA, but who is the first one that always is attacked in, after any of these tragedies? It's always the NRA. They're the punching bag. And that hurts the reputation of the NRA. Publicly, not just between us. I mean, we don't like them for different reasons, but there's, diff there's definitely a motive to harming the reputation of the NRA publicly. These tactics, the NRA argues, are not just heavy-handed, but fundamentally unconstitutional, violating the standards set by precedents like Batanum Books versus Sullivan. The Second, Second Circuit's stance appears to rest on the notion of contemporary corporate social responsibility and the financial implications of public sentiment following incidents like the Parkland shooting. Yet the NRA's narrative, supported by amicus briefs from the ACLU at the district court level, 
posits that Vulo's maneuvers represent a direct assault on free speech rights. The case, according to its proponents, is a bellwether for the health of the First Amendment in an era where the robustness is allegedly being tested. As the SCOTUS prepares to hear arguments from both sides, brace for a verdict that could have sweeping consequences for government speech regulations. As this union watches the SCOTUS enter the fray to delineate the fine line between government oversight and unconstitutional coercion, and while the outcome is uncertain, one thing remains clear. The stakes for the First Amendment and the Second Amendment by default could not be higher. So you have three separate cases. Rahimi, Cargill and Vulo, all somewhat doing with firearms. Rahimi talking about when you lose access to your God-given rights, including the right to keep and bear arms. Cargill, the overreach of the federal government into places like the right to keep and bear arms. And now Vulo, which is talking about, hey, if we don't like this company, we're going to ruin their reputation online. We're going to slander them in the court of public opinion, and we're going to threaten businesses that, hey, if you have an association with XYZ company, that's a reputational risk. So the government wants to be picking the winners and losers in this case if Vulo is upheld, if she's allowed, or if this case cites that she was in the right, which she is not. You cannot bully a company based on your political views. That's the whole reason the First Amendment exists. Whether it's a firearms company, whether it's X, the social media platform, whatever it is. You have the right to associate with whoever you want. right? Even if you and I don't like it, that doesn't matter because you have that right. And that's why these three cases are huge, not just for guns, but also as a bellwether, to use the phrase from the article, about how truly, quote unquote, free we are in these United States.